Greetings Earthlings, it's Iron Alien here and today we're going to be making biocouplers. For one of them it's going to be $20 and for $12, $200 you gotta be kidding, we're definitely making these. In fact we're making 12 for under $100. You're going to need some lids and some 3D filament. Make sure it is the same plastic as your lids. A 3D pen as well as some filter patches with a adhesive back. All that extra money you could throw towards yourself a, a drill. Some other optional tools would be a burr remover tool. This helps clean the plastic up if you are drilling, a large drill bit, a small drill bit, and these 3D prints that I made. If you guys want them, join the Discord. I'll be sure to send them to you. You're gonna drill the holes in with this and then use something similar size for an indexing pin. So when you drill around it, you're not gonna lose where you marked. Take them out, clean them up, and then put them back in here, push them together, and then you're going to use the 3D pen to weld around the outside. So without further ado, let's make these. This is what the lid looks like when it's unsanded. Very shiny, very shiny. Take your sandpaper. If you don't have any sandpaper and don't feel like picking some up, go outside and use some concrete. And go crazy. Uh, but instead we're going to be using sandpaper because we're doing this indoors. We got film for you So you're going to sand around the edges and You're gonna sand around the exterior rim to see how it's like a little bit higher than just the base Make sure we got good adhesion between the plastic when we go through and weld it But you don't want to leave them all dirty because this dust gets everywhere have your proper PPE and maybe a ventilation fan on suck out all the fumes and plastic uh, but we're just going to clean it up here with some little isopropyl alcohol and a microfiber cloth and just go ahead and wipe it down. Then we're going to put this in the print. This is just going to help me hold it while I drill it. Use a little insert and make sure it sits flat. And go ahead and start drilling. I use a slightly duller drill bit because my new drill bit that I just got was far too sharp and gripped the soft plastic and tried to spin it in my hand. So I just went back to this one, draw out the first one, then I'm gonna grab that indexing pin, slide it in, and this will ensure that the hole guide doesn't turn when you're trying to drill the additional holes. Make sure you're holding it safely and your fingers aren't under the workpiece because you will drill your hand. It'll look like this when you're done. You got all these giant boogers on it and they're kind of difficult to get off and they break if you try and pull them like this. Not not good. This is what you need. This is that deburring tool and it just scrapes the plastic like butter. Go through all the holes. It's quite tedious, but turn on a podcast or some good music and listen to this amazing sound. Then once that's done, it'll look like this. This is the before and after, and this is where a lighter or a blowtorch will come in handy. Light heat, just to singe up some of those loose hairs. Obviously being careful that you don't burn yourself, and if you do end up using a lighter, it may leave some soot behind, so it's going to be an extra task to then clean that up. So that's why I like using the torch. This is what it looks like when it's all completed on both sides, very clean. Then you could either tape it like I'm holding this now, or if you have a 3D printer, print out the jig, slide one cap in one side and then the other cap in the other. If you angle it on one of the sides, I found that it was a little bit easier to slide it in through the top rather than pushing it flat through the top. But this is what it should look like at this stage. Slightly rough on the exterior for good adhesion. And if your floor looks like this, then you know they did everything right and you're ready to move on to the next step, which is the 3D pen. Hold your workpiece in one hand and then take your 3D pen and start to extrude the filament into the gap between the two caps. You're going to do both sides or if you are taping it you could tape it in a cross formation and then hit four sides and then untape it or take it out of the mold and then fill in the gaps that you haven't touched. Once that's completed, you're going to add some additional plastic over that center seam. This will further join the two caps together and allow us some excess plastic to shape and mold flush so that the filter patch will stick. I'm going to be using this iron. You could also sand it, but 
This iron allows us to mold it into a continuous seam. Make sure you have some sort of PPE. These fumes are not great to breathe in. I have a fume hood with an extraction filter on it. This will ensure the air stays clean and my lungs stay plastic free. This is the before and after. You could sand it down if you don't like the surface finish to make it look completely even, but this is fine. The filter patch will have no problem sticking to it. So now we're going to leak test it. I grab a larger mason jar, fill it up with water, and then tilt it onto the smaller jar. This way it fills it up and then even flows beyond the top of it. Make sure there's no leaks. And this looks great. There's no other air bubbles coming up and then we're just going to pour the additional water back into the larger mason jar. So then we can get on to drilling it. And grab our dial caliper, measure just a singular lid, and then mark the center. I'm gonna grab our drill or a center punch and just mark where we want to drill. Then we're gonna grab our drill and drill it out. Grab our filter patch, slap it on. Thank you all so much for watching. Be a like, comment, share, and subscribe. Check out all the social media down in the description below. And I will see all you dudes and do that in the next video. Peace.